Hello, friends and fellow lovers of all things beachy. Welcome to The Beach Speaks, the podcast that shares stories about the beach and our connection to it. I'm your host and beach lover, Paige Friend, helping you reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. So grab a cool drink, relax in your beach chair, stick your toes in the sand, and enjoy this episode of The Beach Speaks. Hey, beach lovers. Do you remember answering machines? I remember the wonder I felt when my family first got an answering machine. I came home one evening from a swim team practice, exhausted and hungry, so I dropped my duffel bag at the front door and made a beeline for the kitchen to get a snack before dinner. And as I went to grab the sleeve of Ritz crackers lying half-opened on the counter next to our outdated 1970s rotary dial telephone, I noticed something that looked like a cassette player with a cord attached to the back of the phone. It was an answering machine. My dad got it to appease my mother, who, because she was deaf and couldn't hear the phone ring, was always worried about missing important calls. The message he recorded for when people called went something like this. Welcome to the home of Bruce, Ginny, Paige, and Timothy Baggett. Please leave a brief message and the date and time that you called. Thank you. So typical of my dad. (laughs) From then on, I wanted to be the first to check the machine for messages. It was exciting to see the red message light flashing and hearing the robotic voice you have two messages. And then the thrill of hearing someone's voice played back on the tape. I get the same feeling when I ask at the end of every episode for voicemails, and then I see your responses come in. It helps me feel connected because podcasting can be lonely sometimes. I record myself talking and then I put it out into the world and I don't even know who's out there. I wonder, is anyone listening? Don't get me wrong. I love this podcast and sharing beach stories myself or with a guest. However, I also love getting that in return to hear all the ways the beach speaks to you. Listening to your voicemails is like going on a beach walk, picking up the messages like seashells and adding them to my collection. The voices and stories are different, but what they all have in common is a shared connection to the beach, and I love them all, and I'm excited to share them with you. You know, I love The Beach Speaks because it takes me back every episode to some of my favorite memories. Probably the memory that stands out the most is when I was a kid, I would ride my bike. I lived in Sarasota, Florida, and I would ride my bike down Beneva and down Beneva all the way down to this wonderful beach, Siesta Key. And there was something about the beach that was just a solace for me. And I would just sit there by the beach and I would talk to my angels and guides and ask for inspiration and wisdom. I led a very, very challenging life. Both of my parents were alcoholics and I was abused in every way possible. So these moments of solace that the beach provided for me Uh, really, um, they were healing and cathartic and really helped me keep going. And ironically, as I became an adult and obviously took control of my life and things got better, whenever I would be down or something wasn't going quite right, I could always go back to the beach and I could remember those moments of strength and empowerment. 
And I love, I think that's why I love the Beach Speaks podcast because what Paige really understand is that the beach really does speak to you. It really does remind you who you are and why you're here and, and really allows you to find your strength and to be um, reinvigorated with life. So that's my favorite memory. And it's also why I love the beach speaks and I love all the videos um, that are posted by the beach speaks and all of the speakers that share their memories and insights. Hi, I'm Jen Hardy, host of the Fabulous Over 50 podcast. And I just want to say thank you, Paige, for this amazing podcast about the beach. The beach speaks really does speak to me and I love it because I have a passion for the beach. As a teenager and young adult, my every weekend was spent in solitude in my ocean paradise. And sitting there on the beach, digging my toes into those soft grains of sand with the rhythmic sounds of the waves crashing against the shore, listening to that soothing melody felt so good. And with every ebb and flow, the ocean whispered its secrets to me, and it carried away my worries and left behind this sense of tranquility that I just couldn't find anywhere else. And then parenthood happened. And my time at the beach waned. Three decades of sea deprivation preyed on my soul. And then my anniversary. My husband and I took a week-long romantic trip to a new beach on the other side of the country. And together we experienced the salt-kissed breeze and the taste of pure joy as we floated weightlessly together. And we fell in love all over again in the ebb and flow of those salty waves. And on the way home, we made the ultimate commitment to move to our island paradise that we now call home. Now we walk the short three blocks to our community beach and the gentle rise and mesmerizing rhythm provide a sense of stability for us in this ever-changing world. And it's in that symphony of nature that I once again find my solace and I have a respite from the chaos of daily life. And I'm so happy to be living this dream. Thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to share. And thank you again for this amazing podcast that not only tells about the beach, but about life. It's encouraging. It's relaxing. And it's just the perfect combination to come together in your show. Paige, hello. This is Terry Brock from Orlando, Florida. We're here in the center of the state, and we just love the beaches that are here. The nice thing about being in Orlando, we have not one, but two oceans. Hey, yeah, I know. Okay, I know one of them's the Gulf of Mexico, but work with me on this. But it's fun, and I really love getting out there on the beach and experiencing it. As many times as we've done it, it's always good to go back. And I got to tell you, something that's really magical about it, and those of you listening to this, you can probably relate to it. If you get a chance to be over a body of water at the beach where you can watch the sun. Oh, that is just magnificent. We love to go down to South Florida around the uh, Fort Lauderdale area or Miami area and watch the sun come up over the water. When it comes up, it's like, okay, there it is, just a little bit at the beginning, and then it gets a little bigger and bolder, and then it comes up just sparkling. It's like, how can you not have a good day when that happens? It's magnificent. And then we go over to the other side, the other side, the west side of Florida, right? maybe around Naples or Clearwater or some of the places there, and watch the sun set into the Gulf. It is just magical and mystical at the same time. So either of those, both of them are majestic. There's something about it that is both energizing and relaxing at the same time. So thank you for putting this podcast together, for helping us who love the beach, beaches, to get out there and enjoy it. And please keep up the good work. Thank you for what you're doing.
Hello, my name is Michelle Baker and I am sharing a beach experience. So one of the uh, fun things that I find about Facebook is that it brings up memories. And one of the memories uh, for last month in April was that last year this time I was in Puerto Rico visiting a good friend and his husband and they had property that was almost uh, beachfront. But we spent every single day we went to the beach. We went to, there's so many beaches in Puerto Rico because it's an island surrounded by beach and it's a lifestyle. People just keep their suits on under their clothes, um, chairs in their trunks. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And the water was so filled with salt that you could just float and it was warm and I would just float and I would literally fall asleep and the, my body would just drift. The interesting part about all of this is I don't swim. I uh, have attempted to learn to swim on several occasions through my adult life and with no success. And I had no fear of water. My most uh, nervous point of the experience was being in my swimsuit. Uh, being a woman of thickera and older age, I was just a little hesitant to, you know, be out in a swimsuit. But once I got over that and I got in the water, I had such an amazing time. The sand was glorious. Going to the different beaches, seeing how different parts of the island um, offered, you know, maybe a longer beach. Some of the sand was smoother. Some of it had more rockiness. Some had places where you could go out and there would be a reef and people were jumping off. But just the joy of being in the water and just falling asleep on the shore and listening to the waves and just being in the peace and hearing the birds. And it's, it, there was one point where we went to a beach that was literally you parked and you crossed the highway um, and you stepped over the thing that, you know, the riser to the side of the highway. And um, so that even though you were sleeping, you, you know, on the beach, you could hear the cars uh, driving by, but it was still methodic um, to be in the presence of the ocean and to look out and see that you could see no end. It, the water just kept going on for as far as you could see. And it just was an experience of the infinity and of the universe and the greatness of, of not necessarily understanding everything. And instead of trying to understand, to just really appreciate the gift of that time of being at rest, being at peace and interfacing with one of um, our greatest, the, 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 the planet is covered by a lot of ocean. So being um, engaged with that, it was an absolutely incredible experience. Um, he texts me, so I am making it a point that I will get back to Puerto Rico this year. I will get on that beach. And I will definitely make it an annual. So going forward, I will ensure that every year I am planning to hang out with my friend and his husband because I all I got to do is buy a ticket, right? <laughs> Have a little spending money because it's, it's not a high price point vacation. It's just really a great time of rest and relaxation and just enjoying the company of amazing friends. So thank you for the opportunity to share my beach experience. And I look forward to hearing others. Hey, beach lovers and Paige. I just wanted to share a quick story about one of my first beach adventures long, long time ago. Our family used to go to Lake Erie and stay at a, at a cottage that one of our uncles had. And that's where I learned to swim. I was probably four or five maybe six years old and at that time the waves on lake erie were huge they were over my head <laughs> i didn't know how to swim and that was a blast my mom bought me some of these blow up barbells they were black i remember that and you put them underneath your arms and they would keep you from sinking. So I would play in the water with those and get used to the waves. And eventually I started to learn how to swim. The first thing that I did was to stay in the shallow place and get rid of the bar barbells and and then I would 
dive into a wave as it came up to the shore and then swim just wiggle my arms and my legs <laughs> until I finally figured out how I could swim and because it was easy it was easy to swim underwater for some reason and I, I don't know that I guess that came naturally but uh, to swim on top where you could breathe was a little more tricky but I, I finally figured it out and I'm still alive so it works the waves up there at Lake Erie, unless there's a huge storm, aren't that big to me anymore because I now stand at 6'2". So. <laughs> but another thing that I, that I learned to do up there was at the end was to skip rocks. At the, and at the end of the beach, there was like a big cliff that came out into the water or close to the water. And it was made out of this flat stone material. And, and so there was a whole bunch of, of small, medium, and, and large-sized, really flat stones. And they worked perfect for skipping. That was, as, as um, a young boy, that was um, a really exciting thing to do see how far out you could skip a rock and I, I learned then that you know the rocks that you pick make a big difference because they um, the round ones just don't seem to skip too well they just go <laughs> make a splash and sink and the flat ones though they will skim across the water and if you do it right they can go way 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 out the other thing that I learned on my first family vacations at Lake Erie was how to build sand castles. I had one of them plastic buckets with a shovel and we used to dig holes and build little castles. Uh, they were, you know, they were magnificent castles to, to us being, you know, young kids, but as far as um, winning awards with them, I don't think we would have. <laughs> we just had fun. We played in the sand, made piles, dug holes, watched them fill up with water, and everything washed away. And with that, uh, I'm running out of time here, so I'm just going to say so long. And if you have the chance, go to the beach. <laughs> you can't beat it. Hi, this is Teresa Lysom, and I want to share with you a beautiful memory I have of my favorite beach at my favorite spot doing one of my favorite activities. So I love getting up in the morning at Fort Myers Beach, Florida, running down to my favorite spot and face the water and the ocean and do my Tai Chi Cha practice, which is a moving meditation. I love watching the water and the waves. I love listening to the birds and feeling the breeze and all those physical sensation sensations one gets to feel when one's at the beach. It's not a profound experience that maybe others have shared, but it's a cherished memory that I can visit any time in my mind, and I can still see vivid pictures in my mind of being able to do that many, many times. And I can't wait to get back there at some point in the future and have that real, actual, physical experience. And I wanted to share kind of a comical experience that I have at the beach whenever I'm there. When I visit my favorite west facing beach where there's a beautiful view of the sunset, I build my evenings around the sunset. So it doesn't matter when dinner is, I have to plan it around sunset time so I can be done eating, so I can be down in the beach for sunset 
or I have to wait till I get back from the beach to eat my dinner. So the relatives that I stay with when I'm at this particular beach know in advance that Teresa has to have her dinner worked around the setting sun. So I actually know the time that it goes down. I know when I need to be there so I can walk in one direction and then turn around and walk the other direction just as the sun is setting. I know how long to stay afterward so I can watch those beautiful colors come through after the sun has been down about 20 minutes to a half hour later. And it's, I always get a chuckle when people come down to the beach, watch the sun drop below the horizon and then leave. Whereas I get to stay because I know that the most beautiful colors most of the time come after the sun has been down for a while. And then if the clouds are just right, then we get these glorious colors that linger for a period of time. So sometimes I'm down there for a very long time, just sucking in all that experience and all those views of the beautiful colors, you know, way after the sun has physically gone beyond below the horizon. So that's that's my story. And every time I go to the beach, it will be the same story that I need to work my evening schedule around sunset time, depending on the time of year. So thank you so much for listening to my sunset story. Hello, Paige and your beach lovers. I have a a beach story to share with you. It's kind of a thriller. (laughs) I have a friend that has a sailboat. And so we, when we go to a beach, we go by way of water instead of by way of land. And this story takes place on Lake Erie at Kelly's Island. It's one of the biggest Island, or one of the, yeah one of the biggest islands on Lake Erie and it's just north of Sandusky and Port Clinton it's a beautiful beautiful island with a whole bunch of things to, to see glacial groves grooves um, it has a couple of marinas a seaway and a portside marina and they're very safe places to stay they very protected they have a lot of wine food and they have arcades up there they have a state camping park with a beach and this is the one that we're that we were at this night we sailed all day and and got to kelly's island and we decided instead of going into the marina like we usually do since it was supposed to be a calm and relaxing night we sailed over to the north side of the island, uh, which faces straight out into the uh, into Lake Erie, and we pulled into that cove, not too awful far from the beach. Um, Kelly's Island State Park Beach is and camping area is on that cove on the north side, and it's a it's a beautiful place, a real nice place to camp. If you have a camper and you want to stay at that park you can from sandusky you can catch a ferry drive your camper right onto the ferry and they'll take you right over to kelly's island so my friend ken and i were sailing on his 22 foot santana sailboat and we pulled into that cove this day in august and it was supposed to be nice and calm And it was when we pulled in there. But after we finished our dinner, things started to change. The boat rocked a little bit, which is which is normal because, you know, somebody moves around or whatnot. The boat will rock a little. 
But soon after that, I heard the waves lapping up against the side of the boat. And as the waves build, they do that. But normally, <laughs> small waves don't bother you. But in just about 15 minutes, those waves kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I noticed looking out onto the lake, a lot of lightning coming across up towards Canada. And in, in another 10 or 15 minutes, that storm was just raging. Huge cracks of lightning were just lighting up the north sky. And those waves got to be six to eight feet coming straight into that cove and slapping our boat around. So, so much for our calm evening. So we had choice to make. Can we beat it to a marina out on that lake with those huge waves or just bite the bullet and stay here? So we decided to bite the bullet and stay there. And as the storm built up more and more, it seemed like we were getting closer and closer to the rocks. On each side of the beach, there was a lot of rocks and, uh, and also a break wall. And I don't know why they call it a break wall. I guess it's to break the waves. But I tell you what, if you're in the wrong place, those break walls will break your boat. So our boat was really getting tossed around. And it seemed like we were getting closer and closer to the break wall and, and the rocks. So we decided we were going to pull up anchor and head for the beach and then just tie it off. The one part of the beach has a lot of trees. So we, what we headed to that part and tied off to a couple of trees to keep our boat in place on the beach and just hope that it didn't get much worse than it was. Well, it didn't. And we were safe. And finally the storm passed about three o'clock in the morning and we managed to get a couple of hours sleep <laughs> and then the sun came up and we were faced with the, uh, the realization that we just beached the boat <laughs> and it's not like a little dinghy you can lift it up and get it back in the water so that was our next challenge to get this boat floating again it wasn't too far onto the beach, but it was a little further than we hoped to get it because the, the waves kept pushing us. And so what we did is we put our anchor out where we, where we got a good bite with the anchor and we hooked it up to a winch and we would winch the boat as tight as we could to try to pull it out into the lake. That was a little bit tough, but as the waves kept coming in each time a wave would come in it would lift the boat just a little bit and we would maybe move out a few inches so we kept doing that until we got the boat out far enough to uh, put the motor down into some water and then once we got the motor down into the water we were able to push it out far enough that we could re-anchor and regroup get our sails up and head out onto the lake for another day. Fortunately, nobody got hurt. There was no damage to the boat, except it did. The sand did um, take all the paint off the keel. Fortunately, it's, uh, it's a swing keel. So it's just a short keel and instead of a big long one, like some boats have. And we were off for, a new adventure. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Terry, Jen, Terry, Michelle, Keith, and Teresa for these messages. It was so much fun connecting with you this way. My intention for this podcast has always been to create a collaborative space where beach lovers can come together as a community, where listeners can become part of the podcast, my co-hosts. And I love doing all the things it takes to produce this podcast solo. 
I know the beach is speaking, but is anyone listening? (laughs) Well, regardless of how many people are actually listening, I would still do this podcast because it's my way of using the gift of my voice to connect with something greater than myself, the beach and all it represents. And the bonus is I get to share that connection with you. It takes a lot of time, energy, and resources to put the show together, and your support goes a long way in helping keep the show on the air. It's like that symbiotic relationship between the ocean and the beach. The ocean sends waves to the shore, and the beach sends them back. What would one be without the other? And if you're wondering why I'm talking so passionately about community, collaboration, and what it means to me, it's because I'm so excited to announce that I've launched a Patreon. It's a membership platform that helps build community and is a way for you to contribute to the future of the show. It costs as little as $5 to join, and as a member, you'll receive some cool Beach Speaks goodies plus the opportunity to get exclusive bonus audio content and other beachy stuff. I'm so excited to see you over there. The link is in the show notes. See you at the beach. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Beach Speaks. If you like what you heard, share the podcast with another beach lover. And speaking of sharing, I want to know how the beach is speaking to you. To record a message, just go to my website, thebeachspeaks.com, click the voicemail button, it's super easy, and I'll play it on the show. And if more beach is what you crave, visit thebeachspeaks.com or follow The Beach Speaks on Facebook and Instagram, where I post all my gorgeous sunrise photos and videos. It's another way for you to reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. The beach is speaking. Are you listening?